when I met Blaze, he was um, he came up to me at a gig in Austin, and uh, he wanted to know if I wanted to have a look at this guitar that he had in the case. And I was in in between songs. It was like somebody coming up here right now saying, "Hey, look at this." I said, "Who is this big weirdo?" You know, I didn't know who he was, and I said, "Well, you know, could we like talk on a break?" And and uh, so he he. Uh, I went over and talked to him on a break, and I found out that I liked him. I thought he was funny, and uh, and we got along. And, and then he told me he had a gig coming up. It was his first ever gig in Austin. And would I come to it, and would I bring a bunch of people with me? And <laughs> I was like, I don't know what you do, you know, but I'll see what I can do. I can't promise anything. And I did wind, round up some people, and we went, and he, his gig was a happy hour set in a disco. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but we walked in and sort of sat around him and he started playing these songs at this happy hour and, and I just fell in love with his music and his great sad songs and his love songs and, and he had a bunch of funny songs too and, uh, and he played this next song that day at the, at the disco happy hour and uh, I asked him about it afterward because I wanted to know what the song was about and he said that he wrote this because he was standing by the side of the road hitchhiking one day and big long line of cars going by and no one's stopping to pick him up and he's a fairly intimidating looking guy. He's kind of tall and um, long-haired hippie cowboy guy with a guitar and uh, mm. no one's stopping to pick him up and and then finally for some reason up the road the line of cars starts to slow down and then a line of cars came to a stop and there's a car stopped right in front of where Blaze is standing there with his thumb out and, and uh, mm. he said in that car was a woman with white hair by herself and uh, she looked over at him and she just got frightened. He was right by her passenger side door. And he said, while looking him in the eye, she reached over and she locked her door. <laughs> Blaze kind of took exception to that. So he said when he got where he was going, he got his guitar out and wrote a song for her. It's called Wouldn't That Be Nice. Lock your door, lady, or I'll jump in your car. I know you know how nasty we are. I'll poke out your eyeballs and make you a scar. Make you have to walk real far. I'll mess up your hair to sit on your face Scatter your makeup all over the place I'll take all your money and kidnap your kids I'll take all your money and buy me some lids And I'll call up your husband, tell him you're dead Take out your tonsils and make you give head Let all the air out of all of your tires Take out your molars with needle nose pliers Make you do everything you don't want to do I'll buy me some earthworms, smear them on you Put your fat head in a rusty old Lies. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. That's how you get it done when you're a songwriter. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what it says to do in the songwriter manual and handbook. Um, wasn't long after I met Blaze uh, and you know, as I said, he was homeless, and uh, of course I had a home. He thought that was like this incredible matchup, and uh, <laughs> started living on my couch. And uh, lived on my couch for about four years, I think, before I moved out here to L.A. And uh, I actually moved a few times around Austin. He'd figure out where I was and show up there, too. Um, but I got a phone call not long after he attached himself to me and was living on my couch from my mom in outside of Buffalo, New York, where I grew up. And uh, she said, your father and I would like to drive down to Texas and visit you. We've never seen Austin. And I, I said, that's great. Come on down. I'd love to see you guys. And uh, then I remembered I got Blaze living on my couch. And I said, I better, exp I better warn my mom before she gets here. I, my father could handle it, but I, I thought my mom might have a hard time. So I said, Mom, when you drive down and show up at my house, there will be this man there. And uh, he's liable to smell bad, and he might be drunk. Um, but he's my good friend. He's there for a reason. He writes these great songs, and I'm helping him out. So don't say anything weird, you know, and don't be frightened, you know. And uh, she said, okay, I'll do my best. And they, they drove down and showed up at my house one morning. And Blaze wasn't there. He hadn't come in from the night before yet. And I, I was thinking, this is probably good, I guess. And so I invite my parents into the living room. We're sitting there talking for about five minutes. And all of a sudden, the front door opens, and Blaze comes in. And I said, Mom, Dad, meet my friend Blaze Foley. And and my mom looked up at him and she said, oh, he just drove past you hitchhiking. 